Hey, it's my aircraft. Hey friends, let's fly here today. This is RKPK Busan, South Korea. Medium-sized regional airport with two runways, 36 left and right and 18 left and right. Landing north is pretty easy. You come off of the ocean side, just gotta be careful with go-rounds. Landing south, on the other hand, is a little tricky because there's no straight-in procedure. You have to circle to land after flying the RNP approach. And that's what I'm gonna do today, and I'll stay away from those hills. This is where Air China 767 crashed back in 2002 after confusing terrain clearance rules used in South Korea. For more on that, please see in the description to this video. So you see that river and the hills behind it on the left? This is the valley where I'm going to circle after flying the charted approach. And I'll land on the same runway where my Hello Kitty Airbus A321 is sitting right now getting ready for takeoff. So this is how I'm going to fly it. I'm going to join this Gaia transition to the approach. Fly over Gazelle and then intercept the final approach course of 45 degrees at Nuri. Before reaching Zico I'll be already with gear down and flap street for better maneuvering capability. At Zico I'll start my circle procedure. I'll first turn left onto downward track of 002 degrees and then visually follow the lead-in lights, you'll see them, while descending in the right turn. And I'll extend the full flaps just before joining the final runway track of 182. Piece of cake, actually. So here we are, inbound to Nuri, 6,000 feet, all hand flown, no auto thrust, no flight directors. First officers flying, captain monitoring. Flaps 1, please. Speed check, flaps 1. Select speed 180. Here comes 180. Maximum speed at Nuri intersection is 210 knots. We are at 220 right now, slowing down and about to start our descent. Idle thrust, holding pitch just for a little bit longer to get below 215 knots, which is the maximum speed for flaps 2 extension. And flaps 2. Speed check flaps 2. Still about 25 knots to lose to get to 180. I don't want to start the 90 degree turn before getting slow enough to keep the turn radius nice and tidy. So I'm holding off on pitching down more, helping with speed brakes. And here comes the turn to final. In this case today, final approach course is not the same as the final landing course. Nice and hazy morning in Busan. Should be able to see the airport there momentarily. And there it is. So we're pretty much gonna fly straight in towards those airport lights for a while. As I'm rolling out of the turn, I'm also intercepting the so-called green brick, the vertical path deviation indicator. I've been descending on idle thrust for a while now trying to intercept it from above. Time to add some thrust. EVA Air A321s are equipped with CFM56 engines that use N1 as the primary thrust rating reference. N1 is the percentage of the maximum rotation speed of the fan in the front of the engine. It's at 52% now. The captain authority allows for some occasional sightseeing. It looks like I'll be crossing Wavy intersection above the minimum allowed altitude of 2,600 feet. By the way, the lowest altitude I could descend on this approach without seeing the airport environment is 1,750 feet. The chart says 1,700 feet even, but I've added another 50 feet as it would be required in real life. Now, today such precision really doesn't matter as I've got Visual Meteorological Conditions or VMC. But it is still customary in airline flying to always set a minimum descent altitude or a decision height for any approach. Coming up on Wavy intersection, after Wavy I'm gonna drop the gear and get some more flaps. Gear down. Upon lowering the landing gear, pilot monitoring also arms the ground spoilers, turns on the nose wheel lights and advises the flight attendants. Select speed 160 please. Here it comes. And flaps 3. Speed check, flaps 3. 
In some airlines that operate the A320 family aircraft, there is a custom to not operate the landing gear and flaps at the same time. The idea is that it can overload the hydraulics. Other airlines don't care about that at all. I personally have never seen any guidance on the matter from Airbus. This could be one of those ancient practices that still lingers for some reason. As I mentioned before, I'm planning on circling with flaps 3. This is because during the circling maneuver I'll be flying with a speed of no slower than about 160 knots. This is for additional safety margins during banking, in case I inadvertently overbank. Now, circling at 160 knots makes this A321 a Category D aircraft as far as the maximum circling speed is concerned. Maximum circling speeds are established to provide safe margins from terrain. The faster you fly, the larger is the radius from the runway and the closer you are to the terrain. So this chart here tells me that I must not exceed 165 knots during this maneuver. Of course, this mostly matters if you can't see the terrain. Today it's not really an issue, but I'll abide with the rule anyway. That's what professional flying is all about, complying with rules, even when they don't matter. Very well, so I'm crossing Zico, means I'm done with the published part of the approach. And now I'm turning on to the track of 002, which is the opposite track from the runway track. Now I'm going to ask the captain to activate and sequence my secondary flight plan. It has just the runway 18 right pre-programmed in it, with no instrument procedure. I'll need it for the backup lateral and vertical reference, because primary reference is what I see outside. And speaking of that, there's my first lead-in light up ahead. These lights for sure make a circling approach much easier. And I'm sure those Air China pilots that flew into one of those hills here back in 2002 would love to have seen those lights. They probably didn't have them installed back then. Alright, coming up on the 1000 feet, I think I'm gonna go ahead and extend the flaps to full at this time, actually. I'm afraid I'm gonna start getting too low flaps alerts pretty soon, and I don't want any part of that. Flaps full. Speed check flaps full. And give me manage speed, please. The captain now pushes the speed button to allow the display of the magenta speed target which means it's calculated by the flight management computer. But since the auto thrust is off, I'm going to manually maintain a speed of about 160 knots while turning, as I briefed earlier. I'll slow down to the managed target once I'm on final. And landing checklist, please. Here it comes, landing checklist. Cabin secured for landing. Auto thrust. Off. Go around altitude. 6,000 feet set. ECAB memo. Landing no blue. Landing checklist complete. At this point, the task saturation of the pilot flying goes up like crazy. You have to be continuously switching between inside and outside references to make sure you stay on the desired flight path all the time. When turning on to final, among other things, you gotta pay close attention to the wind. Today there's pretty much a headwind of 20 knots, which actually is the reason why I'm landing on this runway in the first place. The tailwind for the opposite runway exceeds my A321 limitations for landing. There's also a small crosswind component from the right, for which I will need to account by pointing the airplane nose a little bit to the right. So I'm landing on the right runway, 18 right, just to clarify. See that first portion of the runway before the line of green lights that crosses it? That's a displaced threshold, I can't land on it. It's used for takeoffs only. It's just not strong enough to withstand the impact from countless bad landings. Perfect, two whites over red, correcting for the crosswind, right on path, right on track. Cross the threshold just a touch above 50, not too bad. 20, Thrust idle 20 feet, start looking at the end of the runway flare. And touchdown. Spoilers. Reverse green. Decel. When decel call is made, it means there's either a decel light illuminated on the auto brake panel, or there's a strong downward speed trend observed on the primary flight display. 70 knots. Stowing the thrust reversers. Sweet! So, how did you like that? Neat little approach, huh? 
So load it in your sim and put the ceiling visibility down to the minimums. I keep visual conditions just to make my videos look good, but it's even more fun when you can't see anything. Let me know how it goes down in the comments. Thanks for watching and please like and or subscribe as you do play.